speaker is an organizer, he actually had a role in organizing this event. He's had a role in organizing the Recall Walker Political Action Committee. Uh, and he hails also from Southeast Wisconsin. I think there's, I'm noticing, we have a lot of people from Southeast Wisconsin here tonight. And uh, they have many reasons for being out here tonight. Please welcome Randy Bryce of the Iron Workers, Southeast Wisconsin, one of the lead organizers for Recall Walker. Randy Bryce. How's everybody doing tonight? It's great to see you, it's great to see you walk in. You all think it's fantastic signing a petition? Let me tell you what it's like filling out the actual recall papers for Scott Walker. <laughs> We're going to work in collaboration with United Wisconsin, and we're going to get the, uh, I won't say it, I see children in the crowd. You know how I think. We're going to get them out of here, get her out of here, and we're taking back our stage. Um, I would say it's great to be back, but I feel like I never left. Um, before I go, I go any further, I do need to thank somebody very special in my life. Uh, my wife, Mrs. Ironworkers, Faye Bryce, please stand up. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. She takes care of the kids, so that when I go out to fight for the family, I come back. The house is safe. Thank you. I love you. Um, happy first Friday for the recall at Skywalker. This is great. This is why I love spending a Friday evening when I'm not at home with the family. Actually, the real beginning came on February 11th when Scott Walker announced he was going to drop his bomb. The only problem was, he dropped his bomb on a union-made bomb shelter. We got up, shelter's fine, we're dusting ourselves off, we're wide awake, and we're coming back after him. Uh, if there's any doubt in your mind that we're all wide awake, take a, take a walk through neighborhoods. You can, uh, it doesn't take Walker, Fitz, and the other brother Fitz to, you know, they'll have to take off their shoes after they get down the first couple of blocks to count how many signs they see on their hand, fingers and toes. Um, but we got to take a, a good, long, hard look in the mirror. We let this happen to our state. We did this. He, had his, he was sneaky about what he did, and he got in, but we need to look in the mirror and say, hey, we, um, we let this happen. But now that we're awake, we know where we need to go. We let, we let a hero like Russ Feingold, look what we got now. Look what we got now. You don't have to tell me, I tried to go ask him why he didn't pass a jobs act and I ended up spending a day in jail as a result of that. That's how he treats his constituents. Unimaginable. Uh, there was no urgency in the last election. And uh, we thought, that worst case scenario, yeah, it's going to be bad for a while, it's going to suck. We had no idea what he was going to bring to us. And we see it, and we're upset. We have less than uh, 60 days. We have a monumental task in front of us. 60 days to get over a million signatures, both for Walker and for Clayfish. Can we do it? Is that a definite maybe or yes? Yes, we can. All I know is that uh, we're going to have a peaceful revolution. We're going to overthrow those who would have our home state become the first colony for neo feudalism under the flag of Coke Industries. Are you ready for that? Hell no. What they don't understand is that America is a union. We've had our blood wash the streets of Bayview in order to get the eight hour work day at Rolling Mills in, in, in southeastern Wisconsin where I come from. I go there every year. Every year. I take my, I take my two boys and we listen as they read out all the names of those who died to work eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Died. People don't know that. Just a few blocks away from here is where Public workers first got rights. What they don't understand right now in office is that we don't need a constitution, we don't need a piece of paper to give us rights. We have rights. Those papers only recognize our rights.
For too long we've been coasting by on the engines that our ancestors built and fought for. Are we going to disrespect all that they've given us? No. Hell no. Hell no. We're known as the labor movement. Honestly, until Walker dropped the bomb, we haven't been moving all that much. Now's the time to put the move back in the movement. It's time to get out and knock on doors until we bloody our knuckles fighting for the Wisconsin that we inherited. Yes! It's not just for us, it's for our kids. Yes! Corey Mason's newborn to be. Yes! He fights for us, we need to fight for that child, so that child has an education. Yes! We let them take care of it, business in Madison, we get out on the streets. Right. It's time for those who gave us what we had. For those who gratefully accept our gift to them, this is history, people, and I don't need to tell you that. We know who writes history. It's the winners. We're going to write this history. Walker's attacks are killing our children, shot at being anything other than either indentured servants or slaves. If you can't attend college and there aren't decent union jobs, what's left? Winning the lottery? That's not a future, that's a slow death sentence. There's no hope for achieving any American dream under Scott Walker's Wisconsin. We need to recall him and wake up from this nightmare. You know, we're all aware of the bad news, but there is some good news that came out of, out of what he's done. Look at us all together. We're together, we're seeing people, we're meeting people for the very first time. People we had no idea existed before. We don't have any, any hierarchy telling us, you know, down from the mountaintop that you do this, you do that. Everybody just seemed to fit in and know what to do, where to go, get something done, fill your spot, and we come together. It's, it's like a collective. Maybe that's why they call it collective bargaining, but it's amazing. I am just totally amazed. Um, The other good thing to come out of this, Wisconsin killed the Tea Party. Sarah Palin came to town with the flying monkeys. Some of the monkeys are still around. I, I think there's pink recall slips for them. Um, <laughs> and we, we sent her packing. We sent her packing. Look what happened to them. Every, every Tea Party event, almost non-existent. They are a joke. Now, if only the people in Washington would get out of their castles and walk around and see that the Tea Party doesn't exist, maybe we could get somewhere. Yeah. Another good thing, we're definitely not bored. <laughs> you know, now that we're together, uh, we need to get rid of this Colorado transplant who got kicked out of Marquette for cheating with a C average. <laughs> Let him go back to Colorado. This won't be over with the new governor. I, I mean with a real governor. This isn't ever going to be over. We saw what happened when we felt safe and secure. We can easily picture the nightmarish outcome if we would have just stayed hidden in our union-built bomb shelter, afraid to come out, or just waiting for others to tell us the smoke had cleared. If there was any fighting, it was going to see who was going to be the first one getting out the door. And you know what? We didn't hide. They did. They dropped the bombs, and they're hiding. They got their security, double security for Scott Walker. You see them right, being chased down the streets by, by voters. They won't be seen. They're hidden. I think it's funny. It, it doesn't matter where they go. Scott Walker canceled an event in, in Kansas. It, it, does, you know, it doesn't matter where they go. In New York City, you see the blue fist. He goes to Kentucky. You got the rednecks there hitting them up. And I'm, I'm not saying that's a derogatory term. These people call themselves the redneck party. One final, hope, one final thought that I hope you all keep in mind is that people deserve exactly what they accept. My kids don't deserve what's going on right now and I definitely don't accept it. I refuse to accept any step backward with respect to our rights. And it's not just what Walker's doing, it's how he's done it. You can't be anti-union and pro-democracy. You just can't. Collective bargaining is democracy. It's a voice in the workplace. It's abiding by the will of the majority, and that's what we're all about. 
It's letting our voices be heard. That's all that we want, is just to be heard. I think they can hear us. All I know is, you try to shoot my little like her up and <laughs> you see what happens. The iron, workers not, the iron workers, not only Wisconsin, but all across North America, we're not standing behind you, we're right next to you. And we will be, as long as there's a fight for collective bargaining. Solidarity, let's get this done. See you on the streets. Randy Bryce, everyone. That's curious, is Brian Bliss around here? Right over here. You want to come up here just to say hello? He's trying to take some film. Brian Bliss is the man behind the scenes. He is videotaping. He is working on the website. He has done a lot of the heavy lifting. So I just wanted to introduce him. He's been doing heavy lifting all year. And now you can see where uh, some of the truth that has come out from what's going on at the Government Accountability Board, what's been going on in state legislative hearings. Brian's been documenting that, bringing that to people who needed to, uh, to have that information. And if you are interested in getting involved in the Recall Walker Political Action Committee, approach Brian or Randy before the evening is out. So, welcome, Brian. Thank you.